Hello, and welcome to another script case tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at using badges on the UI side of your script case applications. My name is Nate Carpenter, and I'm the script case instructor leading this tutorial. So I hope this is helpful for you today. We're going to be looking at using badges, which is a component of the Twitter Bootstrap library. And we're going to be looking at how we use that inside of script case. So we have three components really that we need to do this. First, we need the bootstrap library and we'll look at how to get that and how to include that in your applications. Then we'll just need some HTML to actually put these components on screen. And then we can put it in any script case application. So it doesn't matter form, grid, blank. We can put it right in there very easily. So let's get started. All right, so here is our demo of our final product. And you see, we have two columns here on this standard grid. And this one here is the badges, this orders column. So we've got some that are red here, and we've got some that are blue. The ones that are red are under 100 in the count. So maybe this person, this employee, had fewer than 100 sales, so fewer than 100 orders. So we put that one in red, and then the ones over 100 in green, like so. Then over here, we also have popovers, and that will be dealt with in another video. But let's focus on the badges for now. So let's get started with actually developing these. The first thing we need to do is look at the Bootstrap documentation for the Twitter Bootstrap library. So here's the homepage. You can go to this at getbootstrap.com. And there's some information here on this homepage, and it's built by Twitter, as you can see. And we need to go to documentation right up here. So click that. And here's the homepage for documentation. So this is going to give us information about how to add this to our application. We have the CSS and then the JavaScript side of this. And then also here's kind of a starter template that you could use to start with. We're going to see how to do this in a second. But for now, we need to find the badges. So to do this, we need to go over to the left to components right here. And then just a second item from the top here, badge. Let's click on that. So here's some information about badges and how they work. They're going to take the size of whatever parent element. So here's kind of an example of that. Some different size headers here. And so to use these, we just need to give it the class once we've included the library. And we have two different classes. The first is the badge class. And then the second are these contextual variations that we see here. So we've got all these different versions here. Primary, secondary, success, danger, warning, info, light, and dark. So all those different variations that we can do. And if you remember from our demo, we use the danger and the info class. So the red and then that kind of bluish green. So we just need to pass the badge class and then the badge danger or the badge info classes. And we also want to use these pill badges. So these are kind of more oblong or oval shaped badges here. And to do that, we just need to pass this badge pill class along with all the other classes here. So that's the basics of how to set up a badge. Now let's get started with this. Let's start with just a basic header here. And we're going to go over to script case here. So here we are in a script case development environment. I'm in the samples application here. So this comes by default with your development application. And I'm going to go to new application here. Wait for that to load. And we're going to get started with just a basic blank application. So we'll go ahead and name this. and then click Create. So a blank application is just a place to put some code. We don't have to worry too much about UI. And this is a PHP block here. So we first need to close up the, close up the PHP block. So just like that. And then we're going to copy some code to get it started here. So I'm going to copy in a couple lines of code here so that we can actually include the Bootstrap library into our application. Okay, so here we have a few lines of code to include our Bootstrap. First is the CSS, then the two JavaScript files. So this is what was on the Bootstrap documentation page. So we just have those three lines there to include those three files, along with this Bootstrap JavaScript file as well. So that's everything we need to make Bootstrap work in our application. So now we can start coding. So we're going to go back here and we're going to copy one of these lines here from this header here, just like that. And just paste it right there. And now we just need to close up or op 
And now we just need to open up the PHP block again so that it can continue processing. Let's run this. And there is our badge. So that was pretty easy to get set up there. But let's customize this. So let's make it here. Let's make it a warning one like this. And copy that there. So now it's a badge warning. So now it should show a yellow color. And there we go. Now we have a yellow color. Let's make this a danger, which is one of the ones that we are going to use in our final product. And run that. And there we have our danger badge like there with a red color. And then we just need to make it so it's a pill. So it has that shape like that. So we just need to add that badge pill class. So just put it right in between them. And there we go. So let's run that and that should change the shape of the badge. There we go. So that's really nice and easy to set up. Let's make this a little bit different size. So we don't have to put this inside of a header element. Let's put it inside of ptakes. And it should take the size of the ptake as its size. So let's run this. And now it's quite a bit smaller, as you can see. So you can put this badge inside of any HTML element and it'll match its size like that. So now let's add a second one of these. And this one is going to be our info, like so. So these are going to be the two we use on our grid. So let's run this. And now we have two of them, one that's red and one is one that's that bluish greenish color, like so. So now that we have the setup, let's put it inside of our grid. So first we need to create our grid. So let's go to new application here. And choose grid right here. Choose our connection and table. We need the employees table. So let me search for that and there it is. And let's name it here. Like so. And then once it's named, here is our query. And let's create this application. This is a pretty basic grid, nothing too special about it until we start adding on our UI components from Bootstrap. So let's make sure the fields are set up first. So let's go over to edit fields here. And this looks pretty good, but let's change some of these labels to make it look more realistic. So employee ID, we can make that look a bit nicer. And then last name. We can use some of the pre-built messaging. Do the same for first name here. Title, let's take title of courtesy off and birth date off as well. Just keep it simple here. Now let's save this. All right, so the fields are set up, it's all saved. So let's go ahead and run this application and see what it looks like. So I click run, wait for the load here. And here is our basic form. Nothing too special about it here, but it's all set up with our fields and everything. So now let's set up the UI components. First, we need to add a new field on here for the order account. So we're gonna to go to fields here on the left, choose new field, just one new field. It's going to be a text type, and then we're going to name it. Order count like so, and then put the label on there so it looks nice. Orders. Create that field. And now it's created, and we can leave it pretty much as is, because we're going to set the value with some code. But before we can get started with too much code, we first need to create a query to get the orders out of the database. So we're going to look at the orders table and use this employee ID field right there to query the database for the number of orders. So let's create this query here. And Scriptcase provides us a nice tool for doing this up under the database menu, SQL Builder. So we go here and we need to choose our table first. So after we select our database here, we can go to tables, and let's choose the orders table. So that's right down here in this list. And then click confirm. And let's choose our fields. And we're going to keep it simple and just add one field for now because we're actually going to edit it a little bit. So let's just add one as a kind of a placeholder for now. 
and then edit our conditions here. So we want to select based on the employee ID. Let's set a dummy value for now. So employee ID is equal to one. That's gonna be our where condition. So here is our query, just a basic query. And we run that and we get all the orders for that employee. For, so for the employee ID equals one. Let's change this so we can count them. So we're gonna count all the records where the employee ID equals one. So get that coded and run that. And so there's 124 records where the employee ID equals one. So that's just a basic SQL query. And we can go ahead and copy this. This will get us our number of orders. So let's go back to our application and let's put this in the events on the on record event. So this gets called every time a record loads for the grid. And let's paste this SQL in here and assign it to a variable. And let's make this look a little bit nicer. Since we only have one condition, we can go ahead and take these parentheses off like so. Take out some white space. And then we need to insert the employee ID field. So we're going to use the curly braces to pull out of the field this employee ID. So that's this field right over here that we're pulling out of our database. So that will limit our query. Let's save that. And then we just need to select that now. So let's actually execute that query here. It's going to save the result in a variable called DS like that. And then we can use that to get our order out of. And let's assign an alias to this query as well. So the count will be saved in an alias called orders. Let's save that one more time. And now that we've executed the query, we can go ahead and get the count of orders out of the result from that query. There we go. Let's save that. So the order is being pulled out of the result of that query. So now let's copy this code. So we just need these first two. We'll look at how to get it get Bootstrap included in our library, in our application later. But for now, let's just copy one of these. And we just need to set that order count field using the curly braces again. So that's that field there. Equal to this text. In script case, will automatically display the HTML. And we need to put that order in the, in the text string. So first, let's get rid of the heading text. We don't need that. We just need the badge. And instead of new, we're going to insert the count of orders that we got out of the database and save in that variable right there. So let's save this now. And that should be all set up. And let's run this. We haven't yet included the library, so it's not actually going to display the, the badges, but it does display the count right there. So now let's go back and let's include the bootstrap libraries inside of this application. So to do that, we need to go to on application in it like that. And let's just copy this code that we used in our blank application right here. So I'm going to grab all that, copy it and put it right in the on application in it and then open up the PHP block again, like we did before. So I continue the process. And there we go, it should be all set up and it should be showing a badge now when we run it. We just have one type of badge so far. we have set up the second type of badge in a bit, but now we have our red badges displayed on all of our order count line items. So let's go back here now and let's make this look a little bit bigger. It's a little bit small now. So we can make this look bigger by putting it in a H tag. So let's do H6 like so. That should look all right. So instead of P tags, we're putting it inside of an H6 tag. It'll make it stand out just a little bit more. Let's run that and see what it looks like. And there we go. Now it looks a little bit bigger. That makes it match the rest of the text a little bit better. So now let's make it so that all these records that are over 100 are displayed in a different color. So to do that, we need to copy this line and change one of them to the info class, the badge info, just like we did 
right here in our blank application. And then we just need to look at the order count and figure out if it's more than 100 or less than 100. So let's put an if condition here and check if the order is greater than 100 here. Then we will display our info class like so. Otherwise, we will display our danger class like so. So it'll be red or that bluish green to make the code look a little bit nicer. So now if it's over 100, it'll display our info. Otherwise, it will display our danger class. So let's run this. And this should be all finished now. So let's look at it. And it looks like it's working. So I've got the info class displayed for everything over 100 and the danger displayed for everything under 100. So that's how you set up badges using the Bootstrap Twitter library inside of script case using some data from our database inside of a grid application. So I hope this was helpful for you. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.